Hello everyone, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. This is Jason bringing you today's video. As always guys, please hit the like and subscribe button. Small family channel. We just love to talk about books. We're going to keep doing it no matter what. Me, the fuzzy one. Well, if she starts talking about books, we got a problem. And the wife. But we'd really appreciate any support you guys might want to give us. So for today, I want to talk about a new author and book that I haven't talked about in the past. I want to talk about Gideon Mills in his book, Paragon. The first book, Paragon number one. There's, there's a sequel. I haven't read it yet. <coughs> and uh, um, as always, I'm going to talk about the four categories. The world, <coughs> character, plot, and the writing style. So, the world is our world-ish. It's an analog of our world. It's basically modern times. Um, and it's definitely, you know, our world. It occurs in New York City for the most part. But um, adjacent to our world because they're superpowers. They're superpowers and, uh, and, and the usual superheroes and stuff like that. In this case, they are called Paragons, which is not the first time I've, I've read a book where, where uh, superpowered people were called Paragons or had at least one Paragon somewhere in there. So it kind of makes sense. But along with this... Not only do we have this this modern times our world ish with superheroes, we also have gods. We also have gods, and in this case, it's the Olympian gods. It's the Greek gods. We have Zeus and 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 Dionysius and 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 Athena and and you know all of them. Now, it is mentioned in this book that the other gods do exist, and some of them have been met. The Greek god or not the Greek gods, the uh, the Norse gods. Uh, hopefully, at some point. You know, we get Odin and Thor and all them. The Egyptian gods, you know, all of them. All of them seem to, to exist. And in this case now, Olympia is is invisible to the world. And they've been, the gods have been isolated by their own choice, by the choice of Zeus, by the All-Father. And this book focuses around Ares. Ares is bored, the god of war. And he is the typical god of war from the stories. But bloodlusted impetuous, but unlike those stories, he has grown, which kind of makes sense. Over time, you're going to grow. And even over, even on Olympia, they have, you know, PlayStations and television, and they, they watch NCIS and all, all of that stuff. Uh, so he has grown. He has grown, and while he still thrives on war and conflict and violence and lives for it and loves it, he also is trying to be a better person. He's not there to destroy humanity. He wants to protect humanity. He, he likes humanity. Um... Of course, he likes the female side of humanity a whole lot more. But, you know, he's, he's not really a bad guy. And he wants to return to, to Earth. Of course, Zeus doesn't want him, but he does anyway. And he does anyway, and unfortunately, he brings along a side, a side helping of Crazy, one of his, his lesser god sisters, lesser goddesses' sisters. But he just wants to come on back down to the world and just be a hero. He wants to be here. He wants to fight again. He wants to be around humanity again. He wants to live again. And something within the rules of these gods, once he breaks through Zeus's enchantment that holds, that, that, that binds all the gods away from Earth, once he reaches Earth, he is basically out of Zeus's uh, domain. Zeus can't magically pull him back to, to, uh, to Olympia. He'd actually have to go down there, fight him his own damn self, and bring him back up there, which he could. It's, it's made very clear that he is far, far more powerful. So, Ares comes down to our world. He just wants to be a hero. But unfortunately, like I said, he brought a side helping of Crazy along with him. And he feels responsible. So he needs to try and find his sister who is doing all this other crazy along with it. And basically, he comes down to be a hero. She comes down to be a villain. She comes down to be a villain. And he feels responsible. And he wants to, to stop her. Uh, along with that, he needs to make his name as a hero. Plus, he needs to make money. He's living in literally the ghetto in a rundown dump. Uh, now, of course, he's Ares. So he is safe, as safe as going to get. Another side of things here is that he, of course, doesn't have an ID or anything, anything along those lines. I mean, how can he? But he also insists on telling everyone that he is Ares, the Greek god of war. So just picture in our times, even with superheroes and such around, just picture in our times if somebody suddenly started proclaiming that they were Ares, the god of war, or any other Greek god. Someone just started saying, I'm one of the Greek gods. Come back to Earth. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, you add in, you've got superpowered individuals that have powers very similar to what Ares can do, and he just comes across as a nut job, a whack job, a crazy, but a fun crazy. And, of course, you've got side characters such as White Angel that is a, a hero that, that Ares most 
definitely wants to uh, do some wrestling around with, let's say. And her little sidekick computer hacker, Lola, whom Ares also wants to do a little wrestling around with. Um, plus a few few cop uh, uh, helpers and such. So the main plot of the book, is, theoretically, is Ares and, and trying to track down his sister while also trying to, one, get to know White Angel a little better and hopefully get her on his side, plus uh, uh, just become a hero and help people and protect people and, and satisfy his craving and urge for violence and war and battle and combat, while also um, trying to figure out what's going on because it seems to be that there is a little bit more to what Eris is doing than just her own desire just to be an evil bitch basically. Um, there's definitely more to it than that, and Ares needs to figure that out, but he also he's not the smartest person around. Um, he's not a dummy, but he's not the, he's not the, 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 the slow tactical thinker either. That would be Athena, which if you know anything about the mythologies, it makes sense. Um, but overall, overall he does the best he can. He makes some allies, he makes some friends, he helps people, he fights some fights, and it's really hard to pin down. The writing style, fun. The writing style is definitely fun. Uh, focuses a little bit more on the crazy. And things do kind of come a little bit easy at times. Um, and of course, Ares is definitely overpowered, even with these these superheroes. And they even have tiers. And of course, one of those tiers is god level. Um, Ares is obviously god level, but he's holding back. So he's, for the most part, he's, he's overpowered. But there are a few weaknesses, such as the fact that his abilities pretty much are all physical, although he does appear to have super speed along with the strength and leaping and stuff like that and his combat abilities. It's a fun, 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 fun book, guys. It really, really is. Like It's, it's hard to pin, pin it all down, but it's fun. It's a blast. I'm absolutely going to read book two very, very, very soon. So it's on my list, I should say, because I have a very large list of books. So if you guys like the, the superhero genre, if you guys like the harem lit genre, if you guys just like looking for, for fun, entertaining book to read, Paragon. Paragon. Is it Paragon? Paragon. It's Paragon. Paragon by Gideon Mills. Check it out, guys. After you hit the like and subscribe buttons, check it out. It's a lot of fun, guys. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye now.